Pokemon Masters, Bucky Patobi here, and with Scarlet and Violet revealing many new Pokemon, I did a whole video about where those Pokemon would fit on the evolutionary tree of life. Um, this is a project I've been working on for years, and there's a whole playlist here on the channel about how all of the Pokemon are fit in relation to each other, like biologically speaking. How is a Pidgey related to a Taillow? How is a Piplup related to a Quaxley? I don't know. We're looking into all of Pokemon life here. And while absolutely there is a link to where you can get this poster and support the channel in the top of the description, every generation I like to update this poster. And one of the big questions, one of the big mysteries that have come with the reveal of two new legendary Pokemon, one very biological looking and one very mechanical looking, is how do legendary Pokemon even fit onto a biological tree of evolution? For this past iteration, I made the decision that legendary Pokemon's origins are mysterious. We shouldn't know them and so therefore they act as sort of little constellations of stars in the background of a poster. We're not going to try and explain their origins but today I want to do just that. I think there are some legendary Pokemon that are biological in nature while, while others are sort of creations of man like Mewtwo or celestial beings like Dialga and Palkia. The thing that really sold me on this was actually in the Crown Tundra DLC where we got to see regional variants of the legendary birds implying that these creatures, a uh, Zapdos and a Galarian Zapdos, are biologically related. They've diverted from each other. So potentially they've stemmed from the same tree of evolution that the rest of Pokemon life is part of. So I want to go through generation by generation and of course even make my way to Scarlet and Violet, Maridon and Coridon, and talk about exactly where all of the legendary Pokemon so far which ones are biological and which ones aren't. Just so you know, me and the last shaman are working very hard on the design of the new version of the poster, and there will be some legendary Pokemon that will be like Dialga and Palkia, where their origins are godly or mysterious and definitely not biological, and in those cases, they will sit at different places on the tree, but you, you'll see in the final version. So let's start with generation one. We have five legendary Pokemon. Mewtwo, the mythical Pokemon Mew, Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno. Let's start with those birds. As I just mentioned, I think all six of these birds are the result of biological evolution. The fact that there is a regional variant proves that they are the result of natural selection over time. For example, at first it might seem that as a result of the vast wild area, the Crown Tundra and the Isle of Armor, Zapdos has evolved to stay on the ground and to run those distances rather than flying, with the flying element being more common elsewhere in the world. Actually, when it comes to the legendary birds, I believe we learned through the Pokemon website for the DLC that these Pokemon actually migrate around and they only come to the Galar region every so often. In fact, in the ancient murals in the Dragon Vaults, we see three birds flying around the Hammerlock Castle. Potentially, these are the original forms of Zapdos, Moltres, and Articuno before they evolved into these newer forms. Though, then again, all of the regional variants of these birds have Pokedex entries that suggest that they may in fact be the original and the result of the naming conventions that then happen to tie into the types that they would later have. It makes no sense to me that Moltres, even in the Galar region, is not a fire type. That j how? Even more so, the shinies of the Galarian forms are the same colors as the regular forms, which could suggest that the original versions are the Galarian versions, that the shiny versions became the kind of more popular thing and that they, they um, went elsewhere in the world and spread almost everywhere. I know I'm paying a lot of attention on the Crown Tundra here, but the Crown Tundra is a sort of land that time forgot, featuring fossil Pokemon, so it is possible that these are the original. As to where they go on the Tree of Evolution, I'm not going to be as specific at the moment as to say the exact other Pokemon that they're closestly related to, but they are, of course, all on the avian wing, mind the pun, of the tree. They will be next to other birds. All three of the birds are largely inspired by other mythical birds that take traits from a number of of real birds, so knowing exactly where their place is going to be a little difficult, though I could see Articuno being with other birds of par paradise, like say Oricorio, and this is just because it has the tail that represents like birds of paradise, it's a whole thing. Anyway, moving on, we've immediately got some mysterious origin Pokemon. Mew and Mewtwo. We'll start with Mewtwo, which is an easy one. Mewtwo is a human-made Pokemon. It's been biologically engineered by people. Therefore, I'm gonna put it with the other human-made Pokemon, and there are a couple of legendary Pokemon that will fill into this 
this category. Mew also is going to have a very special place on the tree because according to Pokemon lore, Mew is thought to be the ancestor to all Pokemon containing all Pokemon's DNA. There are lots of theories as to whether that means that Mew actually is like a sing like the single-celled organism that began life, or as to whether it's like the child of Uxie, Azelf, and Mesprit, which is personally what I subscribe to, and that that is somehow the origin of all species, or that if the original Mew looks nothing like Mew does today. Either way, Mew is going to have a very special placement at the base of the tree of evolution, and that's just because I think that is the most commonly accepted form of the lore. Moving on to Johto, we've got the legendary beasts, not dogs, the legendary beasts, Raikou, Entei, and Suicune, and actually they are more closely related to feline forms of life, with Entei being a lion, Raikou a leopard, and Suicune also a leopard. Or maybe Raikou is supposed to be like a tiger or, a, or something. Yeah, like a saber-toothed tiger. That makes sense for Raikou. Anyway, all three of these creatures are more feline in nature, but we also do know stuff about their origin. We know that there were three mysterious Pokemon that seemed doomed for in the Tower of Ecritique until Ho-Oh revived them and gave them this new form. However, we also know that Raikou, Entei, and Suicune appear all across the Pokemon world in different regions at different times, like the Ore region for Pokemon Coliseum, which also has its own Ho-Oh that appears in that game, as well as the Johto region and other future regions. And there's also the common fan theory that suggests that the Pokemon they were revived from were evolutions. So what does this mean for the evolution tree? Well, I'm going to put them somewhere between the evolutions and other feline forms of life. That way, if you subscribe to the evolution theory, then it works for you. And if not, they are more like cats anyway. So I think that works perfectly. If I had to choose other cat Pokemon that they'd be closely related to, then based on it being a lion, Entei would be closely closely related to Pyroar, based on it being a saber-toothed tiger. Uh, I guess, actually, I feel like Luxray would be closely related to Raikou. More so than like Incineroar, and then I guess Suicune Lipard, but that just doesn't seem all that special. So somewhere between cats and evolutions, these Pokemon will sit. Ho-Oh and Lugia. Ho-Oh will sit with the other legendary birds. If there is a legendary bird that Ho-Oh is related to, it's Moltres, because Moltres and Ho-Oh are both phoenixes and take inspiration from the phoenix, as well as other mythological birds. ho is a really easy one. You might wonder if ho and Lugia should take place as some kind of s celestial special Pokemon like Dialga and Palkia will, but so far, while we know ho is sort of worshipped as a god or was at some point, and it does have very special powers in relation to other Pokemon, we've also seen in the anime that its counterpart Lugia can have a baby and that it looks like it is some form of biological life. I want to state here that a lot of people think about legendary Pokemon having eggs and they're like, well, you can't breed them in the daycare. But to note, they're part of the undiscovered egg group. That doesn't mean that they don't have eggs. And we know some legendary Pokemon do lay eggs, like Manaphy, for example. It just means that their egg group hasn't been discovered while breeding in captivity because you can't, can't breed a Pokemon like Ho-Oh or Lugia in captivity. Similarly, Lugia, I don't think should go in with birds. I think if anything, it is more aquatic in nature. If I had to pin it down, I'd say that the creatures that Lugia takes more inspiration for are actually dragons and plesiosaurs, which would sit it quite nicely next to the likes of Lapras, which is in itself a plesiosaur, but I've put it at the origin point of all dragons because dragons are also stemming off of reptiles and birds, which puts Lugia at that nice junction as well. The only other legendary Pokemon in the Johto region is the mythical Celebi, and for that, there is an insect-like Pokemon that I think Celebi is kind of similar to, and that's Volbeat and Ilamise. And you might think that's a bit random until you remember that Volby and Ilamise actually appear in a show episode of the show all to do with time travel in which May travels in time and Celebi is the time travel Pokemon. So that's the first two generations done. Easy. Fortunately, the amount of legendary Pokemon get bigger and bigger with each generation. Don't worry, we're gonna get to Scarlet and Violet too. When we look to the Hoenn region, we have Regirock, Regice, and Registeel. I am also gonna couple Regidrago, Aleki, and Gigas all in this same group of Pokemon because they're all the Regis. The smaller Regis made by Regigigas. So the only question is where did Regigigas come from? Is it the creation of man? Is it an evolution of biology? Like, I don't know, related to slacking or something? Or is it just it's a, some kind of celestial creation by the likes of the alga? And based on what we see in Pokemon Legends Arceus, I don't think that's impossible. I do think that Regigigas and its children Regis may be some kind of creation of the creator Pokemon, and so not part of the biological tree of life. 
That applies to a lot of the Sinnoh myths, and we're going to get to those in a moment. But for now, I, I don't want to pin Regigigas down to the biological side of the tree, but if that is something that you think I've done wrong and that actually it should be, let me know in the comments. We have Latias and Latios. I did a whole theory a long time ago about how they are clearly related to Togekiss because they share the same triangles and there's so much other mysticism and lore about these Pokemon are the same. They only appear to kind-hearted people. Latias and Latios in the movie, they are in like a mirage garden, same as Togekiss and Togepi. It's a whole thing. But yeah, I think these Pokemon are clearly related and you might think, oh, they're birds, but actually I think their ties are more to do with space and that's to do with Togepi's origins being not too dissimilar to Clefairy's and Jigglypuff's as sort of I've talked about in previous episodes of the evolution tree. I'm not going to go into all that. Latios and Latias next to Togekiss. Then we have Kyogre, Groudon, and Rayquaza. And once again, much like Regigigas, I want to, I, I, I think, I have to assume that these Pokemon are part of the deities of the Pokemon world created by Arceus at some point. There doesn't seem to be a lot of ties between this trio and that trio, but the Cave of Origin and the Hall of Origin do have the same name and the same function. The Hall of Origin releases life energy out. It's the creation point of the universe. And the Cave of Origin is a place of great primal energy, which is the same thing as infinity energy. I wonder if they were created by compressed infinity energy, both at the Earth's core and in the sea's basin by Arceus to create these emissaries of Earth. Earth and C and Rayquaza to keep them in check. So for now, that's where I'm going to go with them. Leaving only two left in Hoenn, and they're both very similar, Jirachi and Deoxys. Jirachi is a kind of living, wishing star meteorite, as too is Deoxys, a mutated space virus from a meteorite. So both of these Pokemon are psychic space rocks, which puts them in with our other psychic space rock Pokemon, Mini or Lunatone, Soul Rock, Starmie even with its power gem inside. In fact, there are a lot of theories suggesting that Deoxys and Starmie are related. So happy to put them there. When we get on to Gen 4, we've already done Regigigas. And like I said, Azelf, Mesprit, Uxi, Dialga, Palkia, Giratina, and Arceus, they are all part of the creation forces of the universe. So they will have a very special place at the base of the Tree of Evolution, much like many of the Pokemon that I've already described. I also think the same is true for Cresselia and Darkrai, and I know you can say, oh, look at Cresselia, it's squint, it looks like a duck. It's, it's a really, you've got to squint to see it kind of thing. And they do represent fundamental forces of the universe, the worlds of dreams and nightmares. It's a, they're, they're more conceptual in nature. And how could you possibly say anything in the Pokemon world is biologically related to a Darkrai? Maybe a Gengar, but even that is such a, a Pokemon of, of question in this series. I think we've questioned it in like five different videos how Gengar can be biological. So Darkrai, not a biological being, nor is Cresselia. Leaving only a handful of Sinnoh legends and myths that are potentially biological in nature. Heatran, Manaphy, Fione, and Shaman. Shaman is an odd one. Shaman's hard, and the last Shaman has, we've talked about this a lot. Shaman, depending on its form, is a hedgehog or a reindeer, or as I've argued with a couple of people online who I completely disagree with, a dog. People think those things are ears, they're not ears, they're antlers. They're clearly antlers. It's a flying reindeer. It's a, it flies because it's a reindeer, because that's the imagery it's evoking. That's just my opinion. I have no idea why it would turn into a flying dog with ears that look like antlers. That just doesn't work for me. It's also like the colors of Christmas, but we'll just make this easy for ourselves. The base form of Shaman is a hedgehog. It's a grass hedgehog. The fact that it can transform into this other form is just the, a representation of just how powerful this mythical Pokemon is. But its base form is a hedgehog, and so I'm going to relate it to other hedgehog and similar grass Pokemon. Or at least I'd like to, except Chespin, while I think Chespin and Shaman are probably quite closely related, if it was just a Chespin, when it evolves into Chespin, it's more like pangolin so that puts it near sand slash i don't think sand slash and shaman are the same form of life so maybe i want to put it more in rodentia and that would put it next to togodomaru except togodomaru is a pikachu clone and all the pikachu clones are related so i'm gonna put shaman somewhere between like togodomaru and the other rodent pokemon and uh shaman's a bit of a mystery but i do think it's biological i don't think it represents some cosmic entity similarly we've got manaphy and fione these pokemon are clearly related to each other but they're also based off of sea slug and I think that puts them in great range to have them related to like Shellos and Gastrodon. They are also Pokemon with multiple variations and forms and one of the Gastrodons actually looks quite similar to Manaphy in the color scheme. So that just works for me. And then finally we have Heatran, a kind of questionably
arguably legendary Pokemon. And you might go, oh, well, it's a spider, except what's actually spider-like about it? It's not very insectoid. Is it like magma come to life? In which case it's some kind of cosmic entity, but then it seems less legendary than the other legendary Pokemon. I think it is biological life. Where it goes on the tree, I'm gonna leave that up to you. You gotta let me know in the comments. Where does Heatran go? How does it relate to other Pokemon? Because I'm genuinely stumped. Gen 5, let's start with the mythical Pokemon. There are four of them. We have Victini, Meloetta, Genesect, and Keldeo. Keldeo and the other Swords of Justice, just to deal with them all at once. They're all horses, they're all equines. I'm gonna put them next to the other horse and unicorn Pokemon like Rapidash and its Galarian form. Easy, done. Victini, it is a sort of fire fox rabbit thing. I don't think it would be totally off to place it with the likes of Ninetales, but if you disagree, fair enough. Victini is one of those Pokemon with multiple biological traits, like what kind of mammal has wings sticking out its butt, you know what I mean? For Genesect, it's a hard one, again, I need your help in the comments for a lot of this. Do I put it on the uh, man-made Pokemon part of the tree, the human-made Pokemon, and place it next to the likes of Mewtwo? Or do I say, look, it's clearly based off of some kind of ancient arthropod, and many people think Kabutops. Do I place it next to the likes of Kabutops, or Scyther, or Glycopod, or any of those Pokemon? That is going to need to be up to you to help me out on. Is it biological or is it human made? And then, and I guess how much of it is one of those things? And then the final Pokemon here is Meloetta, which it is one of these psychic lady humanoid Pokemon, which I think puts it perfect range to be related to the likes of Jinx and Gothita and all of that lot. Also in the Unova region, we have Landorus, Tornadus and Thunderous, as well as the newly introduced Enamorous. All of these Pokemon are deities that represent some kind of force in the universe. I don't feel inclined to add these to the biological tree of life or to separate them in any way. I don't think they're biological. I think they are mystical in origin, and so I'm going to keep them that way. And so too, Zekrom, Reshiram, they are both part of Kyurem, and Kyurem is missing those parts. They were once the original dragon, and the original dragon, I think, is like part of Arceus. Kind of ties into other theories that I have about Arceus, but there are a lot of big space rock dragon Pokemon, including Kyurem and Necrozma and Eternatus, that all have multiple forms and can become more powerful, all of whom their origins seem to tie to fundamental forces of the universe, whether that's Gigantamax energy or dragon energy or infinity energy. So Kyurem, again, big cape cosmic space dragon. There isn't a biological origin here. Getting through them, Gen 6 gets so much easier because they only introduce six legendary Pokemon in this generation. Xerneas, Eveltal, and Zygarde, which straight away I'll go ahead and say Zygarde's a similar deal to the just aforementioned legendary dragons, and Xerneas and Eveltal represent the life force and death force of Pokemon, so they're not biological. I just can't see that in any way, shape, or form. They are the Pokemon tied to infinity energy. Other than that, we have Hooper, Deancey, and Volcanion. For Hooper and Deancey, I believe their origins lie somewhere in space, with Hooper being not an Ultra Beast. I don't think it counts as an Ultra Beast or could be counted as an Ultra Beast. Um, its wormholes and its way of portaling around is very different, but the fact that it has portals that travel through space I think it probably has some cosmic space-like origins, and we already know mythical Pokemon reside out there in the form of like Deoxys and Jirachi. So I, I think that is the kind of home for Hooper. I could see it being related to something like Sableye, for example. And similarly, actually, Deancey is also a space rock because we know it's a mutated Carbink, and we know that Carbink has its origins as well as a floating rock potentially from space with ties to mythical Pokemon. Lots of mythical Pokemon coming from space. The only other remaining Pokemon in Kalos is Volcanion. And there was a classic theory about Volcanion being a man-made Pokemon. And when I look to it, I just don't see how this Pokemon can be biological. It has a very special organ inside it. I think that organ may be human-made, but that's just my thinking. So Volcanion is going on the human-made part of the tree as well, along with Mewtwo. Then we get to the Alola region. And at first it seems like there are so many legendary Pokemon in here. And by the way, you'd be surprised and TikTok about this. So many people seem to think that Ultra Beasts aren't legendary Pokemon. They are, by every category and possible way you can do it. Ultra Beasts are legendary Pokemon. There are a certain kind of legendary Pokemon, like Mythicals are. Anyway, legendary Pokemon Ultra Beasts, all of them are from Ultra Space, including Sogaleo, Lunala, and Necrozma. So all of their origins, everything they represent, I can't even tie it to this tree of evolution. Maybe there is a Mew in their universes somewhere, but I have no idea. So I'm not gonna place these Pokemon across the Tree of Evolution. Instead, they're gonna have a very special place 
um, around the Tree of Evolution, but you'll see what that looks like. There is the mythical Pokemon Magina, human made, very clearly. We know it was made 500 years ago, so that's fine. There's Zeraora and Marshadow. Marshadow, I'm not sure. Again, it's one of those ones I need your help with. Is it biological in nature? Is it potentially related to like Darkrai? Is it related to Gengar? Or is it just a mystical origin Pokemon? I don't know, but Zeraora, you could very clearly suggest that that's probably related to Luxray, and I think you'd be right. So biological for Zeraora. And then finally that generation, you have the Tapus. Tapu Coco, Lele, Bulu, and Fini. And with them, they don't seem very biological in nature. I think they are probably made by uh, some kind of godly power, very similar to the Regis or the forces of nature. I think the Tapus fit in that bubble as well. Then there is one non-generation of legendary Pokemon, Melmetal. Melmetal is a mythical Pokemon that doesn't have a generation it belongs to, but I do believe, again, it lives in the realms of cosmic space rock. Its body is made of a very special metal. Where that metal came from, I guarantee you it's going to be from space. Either way, that's where most of the mineral Pokemon have come from, so Melmetal can come from space, and I think that's fine and justified. Again, how would this Pokemon evolve biologically? Either that, or you could maybe make the argument that it is a mutation of Ditto, and Ditto I'm putting in the human made section, but I don't know. I'm not telling Ditto. Yet another one. I'm going to need to know your thoughts in the comments. We're super close to Maraidon and Coridon, but we got to do the Galar region first. And we've already done Reggie Dark and Reggie Drago. Wait, Reggie Drago and Reggie Lecky. That's what I'm talking about. We've already done them. So that's great. We have Zacian and Zamazenta and Zarude. All of these Pokemon, I think, are biological, with Zarude being related to other ape and monkey Pokemon, like, for example, Pansage. I, I think they're probably closely related. There's also Persimian. I think even in the anime, we see it with Persimian. And actually, Rillaboom is from the same the same uh, generation as well. Well, obviously, if you're being really specific, gorillas and apes and primates, they're all like different things. For the sake of the tree of evolution, just know that they'll be grouped roughly in the same area. Because at the end of the day, they're not gorillas and chimpanzees and whatever. They're, they're Pokemon. And Sashin and Zamazenta, I bet you can't guess what kind of animal they might be related to. Hippos, obviously. No, dogs, they're dogs. Good old doggos. I can't see them being related to anything else or being cosmic forces of the year. I forgot Silvalli. Such a forgettable Pokemon, but it is a legendary Pokemon of the Alola region. We can't forget. Silvalli is a human made Pokemon. That's fine. We know that. But despite the fact that it's in the middle of the Pokedex, it is officially categorized as a legendary Pokemon, and I wouldn't put it in any other video other than this one. That leaves us with just the legendary Pokemon of the Crown Tundra and the Isle of Armor before we move on to Scarlet and Violet. So, Isle of Armor, we've got Earth. Shifu, and I do think it is the result of biology. I think on the Pokemon website there was something in the launch cycle that suggested that Kubfu didn't used to look the way that it did, and it's gone off and it's trained across all of the regions of the Pokemon world, and so we know it can change sort of biologically. And I think the two forms of Urshifu, I mean, just one will appear on the tree, but that is a bear, obviously. It's inspired by bears, so it will go with the other bear Pokemon, like the brand new Ursaluna from Legends Arceus. They'll, all, they'll be closely related. And then in the Crown Tundra, we have Glass. Glastria, Spectria, and Calyrex. Now, Glastria and Spectria are really obvious. Again, doggo, no, horses. They're clearly horses, maybe related to the Swords of Justice, maybe not. Maybe closely related to Galarian Rapidash, who actually has a lot of similar traits to Glastria and Spectria. Yeah, I think they're very closely related. And as for Calyrex, it shares an amalgamation of a number of mammal-like creatures, but I think the one it's closest related to is probably a rabbit, but that, again, you can make an argument for a number of different mammal-like creatures, and I, I could see that. In fact, Victini, and Calyrex, while they look very visually different, they are both mystical flying rabbit-like creatures with an amalgamation of vague traits of other mammals. So potentially they should be closely related to each other and Calyrex will go, and they will go somewhere around the rabbit world. Again, the mythical creatures that they're inspired by, not exactly common mammals that we would find in the day-to-day -day of our real world. So I'm gonna place them somewhere in Mammalia, but that's just my thinking. I've done it again, I've forgotten a legendary Pokemon. There's Eternatus. Cosmic Space Dragon. There you go. Same as Necrozma. Same as same as Zygarde. Same as Kiram. Same as Arceus. They're Cosmic Space Dragons. Forces of the universe representing all the different types of energy. Speaking of Cosmic Space Dragons, we now have Coridon and Maridon. We have the two new legendary Pokemon dragons of the world of Scarlet and Violet. One looking very biological and one looking very human made as a result of gut instinct. But the thing is, my suspicion is that these two Pokemon are related 
mated themselves, even though their biology is wildly different. They are said to have powers that transcend other legendary Pokemon and other Pokemon in general. So what does that mean for them? Does it mean that they are fundamental forces of the universe? Should Maridon belong with other man-made Pokemon? Should Coridon appear with other just general lizards and dragons? Or are they something else, something fundamental and special? What I did with the evolution tree with this past iteration is Zashin and Zamazenta, I, even though I knew they were doggos, decided to put some extra focus on them and have them at the base of the tree anyway, looking up at the tree. I may decide to do the same here because of the complications of these two legendary Pokemon. They are like actually the most boggling legendary Pokemon that we've ever had. Because I could make all the guesses now, but I'm not going to know until the game's out. And I want to get the poster out as soon as the game's out. I want to get it out as quickly as possible so that when the games come out on November 18th, people can buy the new poster and enjoy it like while they're playing the games. Or get it for themselves or for a friend for the holiday. It's something that I did last time with Sword and Shield and it was part of the fun of the launch of it all and I really enjoyed the pressure of that but with these there's no way I'm gonna know until I know their full story and lore. So I may decide even if Coridon is biological and Maridon is human made I may decide to just have them represented on the tree in some other way. That is something I am working on artistically with the last shaman. And there are there are just a few other Pokemon that also will get the legendary Pokemon treatment. The unknown, for example, cosmic entities from beyond our universe. Wobbuffet has a theory about how it relates to the unknown. And again, you couldn't possibly relate Wobbuffet to anything else biologically. So I'm going to stick with that theory. So they will appear represented differently on the tree. And the only other Pokemon that is a question mark at the moment is Rotom. Rotom appears as like a biologically existing creature outside of the space-time distortions in Legends Arceus, which means it's probably not human-made. So how it exists in the world of Pokemon, on. I don't yet know. This could be another, it could be another Coridon. Uh, Maridon. I get them mixed up. Anyway, that is it. That is all of the new legendary Pokemon and uh, all of the old ones kind of recategorized, some biological, some cosmic entities um, for the Tree of Evolution, which I will be updating as soon as I can after the games are out. I may even put it set it up so that there is like a pre-order system, but uh, you know, wait and see how you will feel about that. I want to show you some artwork before then so you know what you'd be getting, but it will be the most updated version of, you know, you've seen a couple of iterations of the Tree of Evolution. This will be the, the new one and I'll be making a super big one so that you can see all the details. Anyway, thank you all for watching. This video has been long enough. And of course, so high, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. As always, a massive thank you to those of you who support this channel on Patreon. You make this channel possible. And a special thank you to the big patrons of this month, the Elgator, Jed Rubin, and Michael Hornshoe. Thank you.